Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to use Backhandler's aggregate functions when retrieving data from the database. You might ask, what is an aggregate function? Essentially, it is a function that is performed by the database itself uh, to apply some calculations on the data that is being returned. For instance, uh, let me switch to the data screen, and here we have a table called country. And as you can see in the country, we have the country name, uh, we have information what continent that country is on, there is a form of government, there is independence here, life expectancy, and so on. So, for instance, if we were to group all these countries by continent, we might need to know how many countries are there in, uh, on each individual continent. Or we may want to know the minimum and maximum of the GNP in such grouping, or calculate the total or average, for instance. Likewise, we could do the same calculations for the life expectancy. So there are plenty of things that we can do here. To use aggregate functions uh, in REST API, it boils down to just adding some additional parameters to the URL that you use to fetch data. Uh, in other videos that I have uh, showed and shared with you, uh, I would use the REST console. However, at this point, the REST console doesn't have any support for aggregate functions. Uh, there's really just no UI to express aggregate functions. The backend supports it, so we would need to modify this URL, which is the base URL to fetch data from the country table. I'm going to copy it and open another browser window, and that's where we will be uh, performing all the edits on that URL. So if I just put the URL in there and fetch all the data, then we get all the countries, but that's not what we want. What we want is, uh, let's say we want to group it by the continent and do the calculation to know how many countries are uh, in each uh, continent. In order to do this, the first, first of all, we will need to add the count uh, property, and count is going to be that special aggregate functions. So we do it by saying props, which is a special argument, and notice here I say count, and then in the parentheses I need to put a property. And this property could be just object ID because we will need to count how many objects there are. So object ID is good enough to express individual objects that need to be counted. Uh, and uh, the, the result of that count can be also uh, specified with an alias. We can say return that count as country count. Uh, so that will add the actual value. But in order for count to work, we need to add some sort of grouping. And uh, the grouping can be added with a parameter called group by. And uh, here, the group by is going to be a reference to a column, which is continent. So let's run it. Now notice that we already have all this grouping. But something is missing here, because we got something back, but we don't know what continent it is for. So, and that's exactly what's missing. And uh, to correct this, in the props, we'll need to add an additional uh, property, which will be continent. So now we have this information. We have the country count, and we have the continent. So now we see that in Africa there are 58, Antarctica there are 5, and, and so on. So this we, we already got it working to understand how many countries there are uh, in, uh, in each individual continent. Uh, this could just continue to evolve to add additional properties uh, to calculate the GNP, the life expectancy, and so on. So, for example, let's enhance it by uh, adding something about life expectancy. Let me switch back to uh, console and see uh, what, uh, what that column name is. So, it is going to be life expectancy. It is important to reference that column exactly as it is written in the schema. So for instance, we want to calculate the minimum and maximum life expectancy for each continent. So here, what we will have is uh, going back to our URL. Uh, in the props, so now the props, we have the count, we have the continent, and uh, let's add the property min for life expectancy. Uh, we will call it min life expectancy. And let's also add maximum life expectancy. Max life expectancy. 
expectancy as max life expectancy. So now uh, I just ran the, that query and uh, the result already includes max life expectancy and min life expectancy, as you can see. So this is very, very convenient because the database does all the work for you to execute these calculations. And uh, uh, if you were to apply some additional uh, where clause, like for, exa for example, we want to uh, include only the countries that got their independence after a certain year. Uh, notice that we have this property in that year, and which is the column name. And uh, let's say that we uh, modify this URL and say that there is now where clause, and the where will be independence here greater than 1900. Run it, and then so the results are now different because it, uh, the database included only the countries that got their independence after 1900. So this is a, a, a very powerful way to perform any kind of calculations. Like for instance, if you're building uh, a social apps or some sort of social wall, you need to calculate all the likes and number of comments and so on. This is certainly the way to do it. Um, I hope you found it useful. Uh, we are actually working on modifying REST, com uh, REST console to include the ability to include aggregate functions here. But at the time when this video was prepared, it is not there. So uh, we just have to do it by hand when you are composing the uh, REST API. Uh, when you work with our native SDKs, uh, there is an object-oriented approach where you basically express the properties that you need to get and reference aggregate functions in there. So it is a little bit easier, but uh, here the, the beauty of this is you can actually try how it works right in the browser to see how the data is returned and how those functions are uh, being used and uh, calculated by the backend. Thank you, and as always, happy coding.